Good morning, and welcome to Veteran Services with Jerry McGuire. I'm pretty excited about this show. Um, today we're going to cover a topic that's of huge interest to veterans, and that, that topic is housing. Before I get into that, I'd like to introduce my guest. This is, this is Cheryl Colviello. She's the program manager of HUD-VASH out of Bedford, and this is Michael Wat Watkins. Um, on June 18th, at the Senior Center, we will be hosting the Gold Star Mothers Association, the American Gold Star Mothers Association, from 1 to 4. It is a fundraiser. It's also their annual convention. Our guest speaker will be Francisco Urena, Secretary of Veteran Affairs, and uh, the, the cost for that is $10 per person. Lunch will be served. Cheryl, HUD-VASH, it, it sounds like an acronym. What, is, what does it stand for? So it is. Um, there's many acronyms in the VA. Um, HUD-VASH stands for HUD um, Housing and Urban Development, obviously nationwide, um, and VASH is VA Supportive Housing. Um, so HUD-VASH is a collaboration between HUD and the VA to provide Section 8 vouchers to veterans nationwide, and they're distributed to veterans via HUD-VASH programs in their local VAs. So Section 8, as I hear this, is, is for veterans who are suffering from low income. Right. It, how does it compare with Section 8 on the outside? So the program is a bit different. Um, in the Section 8 world, um, there's many varieties of Section 8 programs, and so there's a lot of what are called special programs and special types of vouchers, um, and HUD-VASH is one of those. Um, so the difference, the main difference, though, between a, a kind of your traditional Section 8 and a VASH Section 8 voucher is that the VASH voucher comes with a whole program of support behind it for the veteran. So the veteran has to be accepted into a VASH program at a VA, and then they um, are taken in and all of their needs are kind of assessed. So they have a treatment plan and they have a whole cohort of support around them. They have a social worker that they report to and that they work with. Um, and that support is really helpful in helping the person to be a good tenant and to be more independent in the community. All right, so a couple of things that I heard you say was uh, program and um, accepted or uh, I'm going to translate it to eligible because yep. not every veteran can just walk into your office and get a, a, a voucher, right? That's right. All right, so what's the criteria? Right. So to be eligible for the HUD-VASH program, a veteran has to be homeless or at risk of being homeless, imminent risk, and we usually ask for some kind of documentation of that, so um, an eviction notice or a letter or something of that nature, foreclosure information. Um, so that's the number one criteria. And then, of course, they have to be income eligible for Section 8. So um, that number varies very slightly depending on what community they're interested in living in and where they're from. Um, but broadly speaking, as long as they make under uh, about 33000 a year in the state of Massachusetts, they should be eligible for Section 8 with us. If a veteran hobbles in with, with a, a crutch or a cane and he has no job, um, no income, how is he going to pay for an apartment? Right. So when a veteran comes in, and this happens a lot, a veteran will come to us and have zero income. Um, what we do is we kind of look at what they might be eligible for, whether it's in the VA or in the community or with the veteran service officer. Um, and so there's a lot of variables. They could be eligible for a service connection, which is a service-connected disability. They might be eligible for a pension in the VA, um, depending on on their low, the fact that they are so low income. Um, they might be eligible for Chapter 115 benefits with someone like yourself um, in your, age, your, your organization. They might also be eligible for other income from other nonprofits that work with veterans in the community, or they might be pursuing a, a claim with Social Security, and those are all things we can kind of help them access. All right. So, Cheryl, you're the program director for VASH at, out of Bedford. Right. Mike, what's your role? I'm a peer specialist. So um, basically, what our program does is we combine what's called clinical and non-clinical intervention together to help assist the veteran. And my role is, of course, the non-clinical role as a peer, kind of like based on the model of real-life experience that can't be replicated on a professional level. Okay. And um, so I just work with the veteran where he's at. All right, so you work one-on-one -on -one with veterans. Absolutely. And, and do you... Do you assist the veteran in, once he gets the voucher, do you, do you assist in helping secure an apartment? Sure. Assist in apartment searchings and apartment viewings, filling out applications. Basically, um, you know, meeting the veteran right where he's at, whatever he may need or she may need. 
okay. because our program has men and women. Right. So, yeah. Um, so for the sake of this conversation, a veteran comes to you mm -hmm. uh, from the, the homeless stage. Mm -hmm. He has no furniture. He has no bed to sleep on, and you're going get, to get him an apartment. How is he going to furnish that? Um, there's a, I have a few different answers. So there are a couple of, of varieties of what could happen. Um, we actually do, in our VASH program, have what's called project-based housing. There's different kinds of Section 8 vouchers, and we have tenant-based, which allow folks to live within our catchment area wherever they choose, um, so long as it's within our catchment area, which is quite large. Um, and we also have um, some project-based vouchers, which are connected per to particular buildings. Um, and we have one in Beverly, Massachusetts. Um, and for instance, in that That's circumstance- the one, I was at the groundbreaking for that one. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And so that, um, that's an, and the reason I bring this up is because that particular building comes furnished. So not only does it come completely furnished, it comes with everything a person could need to start living in their own apartment. Um, linens, pots, pans, t utensils, plates, every basic thing you could you could need. So that isn't always available. You know, we definitely have turnover there, and, and sometimes there's openings and sometimes there's not. Um, but that is one option. Um, if that's not something the veteran is interested in or it's not available and they're going to work with us um, purely through a tenant-based voucher, um, we have a lot of resources to help with that. And so um, we have good relationships with the furniture banks in, in Throughout our catchment area, there are a couple that we work with. Um, now, by furniture bank, mm -hmm. I'm, when you said this, I'm, I'm picturing like a, a warehouse where you you store furniture like you would money at a bank. Mm -hmm. It is just that. Pretty much. I mean, they all kind of are organized differently, but it's generally a large warehouse type space. Folks make donations um, to different organizations of used furniture, and it's kind of vetted out in the sense that it's make, they make sure it's clean and, and all of that, and then they kind of recycle it to people in need. So it's kind of gently used. Yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. our veterans benefit really greatly from all of those agencies. We also do have opportunities for new mattresses, um, because sometimes that's something that you'd want to have new right, if you right. could. Um, and so we're always looking at opportunities to either find discounts for that, or, or sometimes the VA, um, the VA has been supplying those in past years. They're limited quantities, so we make sure that we give them to the folks who are most in need, um, but there are some resources for things like that as well. Um, but there's lots of agencies, HGRM, um, Michigan What is Beads, HGRM? Um, housing Goods, HGRM, Recycled Something. I can't stand. That's Remember okay. The I didn't mean to put you on the spot. They're in, they're in Acton, and they're wonderful. They're just really welcoming people and very helpful to our veterans. Um, and then there's Mission of Deeds in North Reading, um, Beverly Bootstraps. There's a lot of different So agencies. how does the veteran go from receiving the voucher to receiving some furniture? Do, do you bring him? Do you give him a note? Make a phone call? We coordinate all of that with the veterans. So we help facilitate, you know, being homeless and getting housed is exciting and completely overwhelming at the same time for folks. Right. And so our role um, as you know, social workers and peers on the team, we work in, you know, in tandem together, we work real closely, um, is to make sure that the veteran, we know what they need, and what they're comfortable with, and we help them access these things. Um, and so we would make a referral, for instance, to a furniture bank, um, and then we would coordinate with day and time. And if the veteran had their own vehicle and felt quite independent about taking care of that, they would do that on their own. Um, and we, it's the whole spectrum of need. And so we might have somebody who doesn't need us for something like that and someone who absolutely needs us to have a vehicle, absolutely and Where would you get help. the vehicle? Depends on how much stuff they're, say, they're in need of. <laughs> say um, a two-bedroom apartment with a living room and kitchen. The veteran has absolutely nothing, and we're going to send them to a furniture bank. In that case, when we would need to really uh, furnish a whole apartment, right. um, we'd probably work with one of our partners, and we work with uh, Boots on the Ground is one of the partners we work with often, and they're a moving company with discounted rates, and we collaborate with a lot of our SSVF programs, which is Supportive Services for Veteran right. Families, um, and th that's essentially VA um, money that is kind of um, provided to nonprofit veteran organizations in the community to partner with us to right. help our veterans access these things. Like so the Northeast Outreach that you've heard me veterans talk about Northeast so many Outreach times. Center. Yep. Veterans Northeast Outreach Center, Veterans Inc., uh, Volunteers of America, El Hand and Lynn. So we have a lot of great partners in the community. This is not um, a one-shot deal where the VA is, is doing this alone. We have a lot of community partners, and we couldn't do it without them. So, so you're kind of like the central hub, and each spoke 
has a, a different support agency, whether it's furniture or um, you had, had said basic needs for veterans. So um, maybe help banking and, and balancing a checkbook. Um, shopping goals if the the veteran is disabled sure um if 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 the veteran um is is not mobile do you have somebody that helps him shop uh, get food or does he have to rely on friends it's probably it's probably a bit of both um you know to live in the the hudvash program you need to be able to live independently so if if someone came to us who was impaired enough that they really needed a lot of hands-on assistance, it might not be the right fit for them. Uh -huh. um, it, it really would depend on clinically and medically what their needs were. If they just kind of had some limited mobility um, and they could get around but they needed a little bit of assistance, we'd obviously access things like the ride for them if that would be helpful for them. Um, Sometimes, you know, the peers are very helpful with, you know, helping people get to and from appointments, and so are the social workers, but that's not our entire role. Um, it's not just a transportation role, so we'd really want to help that person be as independent as they could. Um, we would certainly help them if we, ha if we needed to, but um, we'd want to foster that independence and, and create the link to the resources that would help them be able to do that. Now, Michael, as a peer specialist, mm -hmm. do you just show up and make application for this job, or is there training involved? Yeah, there's training involved. There's a, how how intense is the the training? How how long is it? Um, well, to get certified, um, you have to go through like like a six six week course uh, with the transformation center. Then you have to pass a state exam. After you pass the exam, you meet your required hours. And prior to that, though, there's like you have to be in some type of recovery. So this role is basically almost like user-consumer concept to where um, the person has been through certain things in their life. And, and that's where the life experience That's where the life comes experience in comes okay. in along with training combined. Then, um, yeah. So you're certified. pretty serious about helping your brothers and sisters. Very serious. Yeah, good this man, is, um, good man. This is something that, you know, most of the peers or all of them that I know are very passionate about, as you are yourself. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, Sherry used to be my case manager when I was on VASH. And the first show that I ever spoke about, I, I, I bragged about <laughs> this, this VASH organization. I, 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 I spoke for a while that... Uh, I, I had been a, a VASH recipient. That was some time ago, but... Um, and you were things, a, success, a success story. Things have <laughs> only grown, right. you know. The, the, um, I don't, I don't want to say the benefits, but the, the assistance yes. that's available to veterans today, yes. um, it, it's phenomenal. It really is. You know, the, the VA in general is one of the best... All, all my joints have been replaced by, by the VA. <laughs> I got six. Um, and and I, I absolutely love the care that I get from the VA. I mean, every organization has its 10%. And you hear about that on the news. But that's not the VA. You know, you guys are the VA. You're going out there. You're, you're getting the, the veteran off the street. You're providing them with a home. You're providing them with furniture. That That's f just phenomenal. Now, other agencies that you work with, um, like housing authorities, um, if there was a, for whatever reason, if there's a contract dispute with the housing authority and the landlord, do you intervene at all, or, or is that just be now between the, the landlord and the housing authority? It, it kind of depends on the circumstances. So we, you know, as I've kind of alluded to, you know, thus far, we cannot do this alone. So we have so many partners in the community, and we have we refer to them as stakeholders. So everyone's a stakeholder in this process. The veteran is, of course, the number one stakeholder, um, and then all of our partners. So the housing authority we work with that issues the voucher, you know, they are governed by HUD, and so they have their own rules and regulations. And then there's the landlords that we come in contact with, some of whom we work with quite frequently, and we're always looking for new landlords, so I'll hopefully get to speak about that soon. Oh, absolutely. Um, but um, so we work with lots of landlords. If there was ever an issue between a landlord and the housing authority, um, around something particular with the voucher um, or an inspection or something like that. There's not 
a whole lot we can do because the Housing Authority has their own set of regulations, but sometimes we can help facilitate those conversations and we're happy to do so if that would be helpful. Um, you know, sometimes a landlord might have a question about why it's this way or that way. We do try to, um, you know, we do a lot in VASH. The social workers on the team are, you know, clinical social workers. We do case management. We do therapy. Um, we organize a lot of services. And we also apartment hunt and act as realtors and to do all these kind of, we put on a lot of different hats to try to make this work for folks. Um, and so a lot of what we do is educate ourselves around what the housing authority requires and what they look for. That way we can educate our landlords so they're prepared. And so sometimes if we need to be a conduit for that, we are. Um, if that helps. Anything to help the now, process. I'm going to back up a little bit to um, my question about the veteran having absolutely no income. Would you pay 100% of his rent to get him into an apartment? How does that work? If a veteran has zero income, most um, of the housing authorities charge a minimum. And so the veteran might actually have, a, say, something like a $25 a month payment. So if the rent was $1,000, they'd pay all but the $25 the veteran would be responsible for. And that sounds completely reasonable, except when you have zero income, you don't have $25. Right. So well, we are always- Well, that's where Chapter 115 would come in. Absolutely. So right. if a veteran was eligible, that would right. certainly be and a And just to remind you, Chapter 115 is a Massachusetts general law that says if a veteran is financially in, in trouble, he can come to a veteran service officer. There are 351 towns and cities in Massachusetts. Each one of them is represented by a veteran service officer who can help you out. Oh, don't be afraid to, to give Town Hall a call and ask to speak to your veteran service officer. Absolutely. We value the veteran service officers that we work with, and um, we work with them all over the state. So I can speak very openly about how much we appreciate them and what they do for the vet veterans we serve to. Um, without them, a lot of this wouldn't be possible. So it's just a really great partnership. Um, it's just, you know. Now, landlords, how, yeah. how do you get in touch with landlords? So our VASH program at the Bedford VA has been in existence for a really long time, um, well, probably about 25 years or so. Um, it was piloted, um, it was one of the first pilots nationally 25 or so years ago. So we've been doing this at Bedford for quite a long time. Um, it's, the program has changed over time. As you said, there's a lot more services that happen now. So, yeah, I mean, peers, you know, even peers. They, they weren't there when, when I was No, there. the peers have really, I mean, I think the whole peer movement has kind of come up in the VA, I want to say, in the past maybe eight years or so. And more and more, the peer program has grown, specifically at the Bedford VA. They're very much at the forefront nationally for the peer work they do. So this is a national program now? Yes. Cool. Yep. Um, but I think that Bedford, because they're kind of always on the cusp of these things, they're working hard to, you know, make sure that peers are involved. We've had peers involved in the VASH program for the past three years, but this is the first year of the three where they're um, hired in such a way that they're really, really part of our team and really enmeshed with us and working side by side on a daily basis. And we couldn't do, them, do it without them because they're just invaluable. So they provide a service and they have skills that we can't um, recreate um, by learning stuff in school. And there's, there's nothing to, to, you know, that camaraderie that veterans share is not replaceable. And no. so we value very much, you know, the fact that they do what they do and they are genuinely so passionate about it. We have three other peers on our team besides Michael and we value each of them greatly. Um, but anyway, landlords. So landlords. Yeah, how so, do you get in touch with how do you tell a landlord that this is a good idea, that this is beneficial to the landlord? Yeah. So you know, the housing market right now is really tight. Rents are very high. Um, so it's more of a challenge for us to find housing. Um, what I've been doing um, quite frequently is going around to talk to landlords um, on an individual basis. And I've been going to a lot of landlord association meetings and things like that um, to meet with folks, to, ex to kind of do some education around what HUD VASH is and do what you're saying. Just talk to them about why it's beneficial. You know, I think first and foremost, um, to know that you're going to be working with a veteran that not only has the subsidy that you can rely on for rent, that's key, but you also have peace of mind knowing that there's a team of people behind this veteran helping them to, to be a good tenant and to pursue the things they're going to need, like um, upfront costs or furniture or, you know, if they don't understand their lease or there's questions about how to handle a situation, they have, um, you know, their social worker and their peer that they can go to to get consultation and guidance. Or if they feel like, 
you know, this is the first time they've ever had an apartment and they're not sure how to engage with their landlord around, you know, a broken faucet or something like that, they have people that are going to be able to help them do that. And so um, we're also a resource to the landlord. And so we have all the veterans sign a release when they lease up with somebody um, so that we can speak with the landlord around the housing issue. So if a landlord ever had a concern, um, they could call us and we could get involved in that way as well. Now, another program that just popped in my head way aside from this, um, it, it's a social media program of veterans and, and they call it a quick reaction force. And these veterans are plumbers and carpenters, uh, electricians, okay. um, you know, general helpers. And when a veteran or the wife of a deployed veteran or, or the husband of a deployed veteran or, or Gold Star family needs something, especially in an emergency, these guys get together, they put it out there on social media. Um, would that help you, you know, with your um, leaky faucets for, <laughs> for a low-income veteran? Um, somebody's going to pay for that faucet. Mm -hmm. um, in the case where the, the landlord says, well, it's leaking, I don't mind paying for the bill. But that mm -hmm. drop, drop, drop aggravates the veteran so right. much that it's got to be fixed. Right. These guys would, would be willing to come in and, and fix it. Yeah. Um, and they, they're usually a lot quicker than making an appointment because wow. it's a priority. Sure. Any resource that we can provide to the veteran if, as an option, we welcome any time. So that could, that could definitely be helpful. Right. Um, with, with the landlord, what is the biggest benefit for the landlord accepting a, a United States veteran on a VASH voucher? I mean, I think that you have, first and foremost, the opportunity to help a veteran. So, I mean, I think that's the biggest. Um, and I definitely have landlords that reach out that say, I really, I have a unit and I really want to help a veteran. And so that happens a lot. Um, and I think that when it's coming from a place of being interested in helping a veteran, um, there's a lot of um, just thoughtfulness on the part of the landlord. You know from the get-go that that landlord is going to be somebody that is going to, you know, have patience and and maybe some flexibility around like working with this, with different systems and programs. And so um, we value that greatly. So I think it's number one helping a veteran. I think again they know that they're going to have the subsidy and they're going to have the support. So it's not just a traditional Section Eight where you know you're going to have the the subsidy, but you know maybe if you have concerns with the veteran or or the veteran has concerns on their end, there's kind of an intermediary and the VA is going to be there to provide that support. Um, when I've talked about this with landlords, they love that. They, they feel like that's something they don't get in traditional Section 8 settings so and it would be really helpful. What I'm hearing, and I'm going to compare a non-veteran with a veteran. Sure. A, a non-veteran has Section 8 and a veteran would have vast supportive housing mm -hmm. that would include a, a Section 8 voucher. Yes. Okay. So the non-veteran has the, the Section 8 voucher, and that's it. We're, we're done right. with that. But the, the veteran who receives the VASH voucher has, the landlord receives the guaranteed income. Mm -hmm. um, the landlord can call you, you know, um, Mike's radio is too loud at 11 o'clock at night. What can you do about that? And you mm -hmm. make a phone call, mm -hmm. and it kind of just smooths everything right over. Mm -hmm. And Mike, turn down your radio after 11 o'clock. Oh, I didn't realize it was that loud. Right. Um, I'm going to put my hearing aids in. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, and it's usually something that simple, really. Yeah. Um, the, the amount of assistance and care that comes with the VASH program it's really, it's pretty phenomenal, you know, if, if you could, if, if you wrote this down in, in, in a comparative, you know, form, it would be non-veteran receives right. Section 8, right. and then veteran receives, and let's go to page of. 2 and 3. <laughs> right, yeah. because we're not just there if there's a problem either. We're, we're working with the veteran the entire time. So from when the veteran comes to us and presents as a homeless veteran, with no income, we are working with them from that moment to get them more resources, to get them some income, to find them housing, and then to provide the wraparound supports they need to be successful. And so maybe they want to go back to school. 
Um, maybe they want to find employment. We're helping them to access those things, um, and we're meeting with them regularly. So we're not just showing up if there's a problem or a concern on the part of the landlord. We're actually meeting with the veteran all the time. So we're meeting with them you know, at a minimum of once every four weeks. It's usually much more frequently than that. And we do home visits. So we're actually coming to the apartment making sure that the apartment is in good shape for the veteran, but also that the veteran is doing their part as a good and to be a good tenant. So we're there very involved and in, in making sure things right, are so good. So I have two, two questions after listening to you. And again, I, I bounce back to when I was a, a VAST recipient. Sure. And a gentleman named Ken Link had your position yep. at the time. And he encouraged the heck out of me to go to school. Mm -hmm. um, he, he was a tough love kind of guy because he... he <laughs> He, uh, he didn't beat around the bush, right. you know, uh, <laughs> but today I have four degrees. Right. So, you know, Ken, thanks if you're watching this. <laughs> uh, the, the other thing is when a, a veteran goes to school, he has more than one avenue to go to school with. Yes. He has the GI Bill. Yep. Um, he may or may not be entitled to voc rehab. Right. Are there any programs now that VASH offers to help somebody get into school other than voc rehab or GI Bill? Not specifically. Um, we definitely, you know, there is a, a program in VA now called VITAL, and I'm not going to be able to tell you what that acronym stands for. <laughs> um, I always forget. But um, uh, the VITAL program are social workers, VA social workers who are embedded in local colleges. And so it's not its own program to get people into school, but it's to provide to support to folks in those settings um, who are veterans. Um, and we have a lot of good relationships with a lot of, especially the community colleges um, and some of the state schools. They usually have a veteran service um, office. And right, so like we, North Shore Com Community College exactly. with uh, um, Kristen... <clears throat> Babcock. Yes, yes. She's awesome. Yes. And so we will, you know, reach out to those folks and say, hey, we have a veteran coming your way. We're working with them. Like, how do we wrap services around this person to make sure they have what they need? Um, and sometimes the veteran, again, is very independent and able to pursue those things on their own. And sometimes they really need either a push, maybe can give you a little push, um, or sometimes they need you to actually accompany them and help them take those first steps to kind of build that confidence and I don't know if you want to speak to that. It's a lot of what the peers do is they really yeah. join in partner with the veteran on some of those very specific tasks sometimes. Yeah, so um, like, uh, that's okay. <laughs> no problem. Uh, like the, the vital program like she was talking about, um, is the, we also have like peers there. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of the same way like the social workers do. We network with one another and um, assisting veterans and getting connected with the different resources that that they want or need to become successful because um, that's basically what the program is about. I'm also um, a VAS a veteran. I came up through the VAS system, graduated, and then became employed here as a peer. So um, it works. Yeah, it does work. You know, it really and does when work. When you send the message that it works, that's the real message that veterans need to hear. Yeah. You know, because often we <clears throat> almost like we see things, but we don't see that they really work. But it's like kind of like uh, an onion. You know, you got to peel back one one layer at a time, um, and, and sometimes that that causes tears. I, I remember it was a hard road for a while. Um, a lot of times, I got in my own way. No, no, don't argue. That's true. Yeah. I think that's common, though, and, and I think that's the beauty of VASH is that it isn't just a housing program. It's not here's a voucher, good luck, and, and live on your own yeah. with no support. Our, when we sit with a veteran and talk about what their goals are, we're talking about housing, of course, but then we're talking about, you know, are there any mental health, you know, things you want to address? You know, do you have a substance history that you want to address? Do you have educational goals, financial goals, employment goals, and what are they, and how do we how do we help you get to where you want to be? So, you know, I think that it's all encompassing and that's the only way to do this. You can't do it in a silo. You have to kind of address the whole big picture so that the holistic approach addresses what's important to the veteran and where they're at and what they need. Now, not necessarily how large is the veteran population, but how large is the support system in Vash Bedford? So our team is pretty large. Um, we have quite a few veterans in our HUD-VASH program at Bedford. So 
Um, there are, when we are at full capacity, 22 people on our team that I supervise, um, four of whom are peers. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty large team. Um, but out, we also have a half-time nurse practitioner, which is new, um, and she's wonderful. And so we, but that's just our kind of little pocket. We then expand to every other VA service that's available to a veteran. We are the conduit for that. So they might have a primary care, they might have a psychiatrist, they might have other outpatient services, they might have, um, you know, physical therapy, or they might be doing voc rehab, which is kind of another arm of the VA. So we collaborate with them. Um, they might be working with vital folks. They might be a returning veteran from a current conflict, and maybe they're working with the um, OEF, OAF, OND team. I'm using lots of acronyms for the viewers. Um, That's so Elizabeth Price. Elizabeth Price. She's, she's an wonderful. Angel. Yeah, she's wonderful. So we work closely with them. Um, so it really depends on where the veteran's coming from, and we look at the whole package of what they need. And I mean, I sit with veterans every day. Um, and I sat with a young, uh, a young gentleman who came in the other day who's very new to the VA, has no idea what he's eligible for, has no idea that he, and he happens to be eligible for a ton of services, and he's been struggling with work and medical issues and um, family issues, and I, I had like so many potential um, so, you know, recommendations and, and maybe solutions for him right at the top of, uh, right off the top of my head but I didn't want to overwhelm him either. So right. we kind of got to know him a bit, alluded to some of these things, and then we'll prioritize what we'll try to go after first for him. So Cheryl yeah. just confirmed something <laughs> I say every, every show. The biggest problem a veteran has is a veteran doesn't know what he doesn't know. Mm. So you really need to reach out a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you just reach out and make that first connection, Absolutely. you'll be directed in the, in the, on the right path. Now, if... If I wanted to apply for VASH today, do I do that over the phone? How do I find VASH at Bedford? VASH sure. is huge. It is I huge. mean, uh, Bedford is huge. It, yeah, Bedford is huge. So the way that we like to do it, and I should say this too, so my team is pretty large, um, and we have a very large catchment area. So we cover almost the whole city of Boston, the entire North Shore, north of Boston to the New Hampshire line, and west to Ayer and Framingham and some of the other outliers out there. So it's a very large physical geographic area. So my team is divided into four smaller teams, which is actually different from when, when you were with us. And um, so they're almost subject matter experts on their particular area, but what that also means is they are embedded in those communities. So our social workers are where their, our veterans live um, to provide easy access for the veteran to get to their social worker if they need anything, and just provide access for the you know routine appointments so that they don't have to travel all the way to Bedford. Um, but part of doing that is it also allows us to meet with folks where they live to take applications um, and do outreach for veterans who might not know what they're eligible for or even if they're eligible for VA care. We provide that outreach in those communities. So if they wanted to apply for VASH, they could just call directly and the, the, there's two numbers they could call. They could call, and I'll say them now, yeah. they could call 781-687-2374 um, and that's kind of our administrative line for homeless services um, and they would talk to Pat Collins who would get their information and make sure I got it, or they could call me directly. And my number is 781-687-3521. Now I'm back. I'm 3521. 3521. Um, my number changed after about 12 years of having the same landline. They switched it on me. <clears throat> so I'll say that again. So 781-687-2374 and 781-687-3521. Either these number. These numbers will be on the bottom of the screen. Please take a minute to jot these down. Either number. And if you have a question about even something that's not related to housing or homelessness, I'm happy to take your call and I'll put you in touch with the right folks um, and make sure you just don't get, you know, hit a wall. I'll make sure you get in touch with the right person. Um, you know, in the VA, we really think about there's no wrong door and there's no wrong person to call. We're going to help you get to what you right. need. So don't hesitate to call if you have a question. Um, but if someone did want to apply, we take applications in person. So I would arrange for someone to, for a veteran to either come in if that was possible, or if they couldn't come into Bedford, um, we'd make sure that someone could come out to them. So if there was somebody in North Andover that was interested and they had transportation issues, um, I have a series of people that sit in Merrimack Valley, and I'd have one of them connect with that veteran directly, set up a time one-on-one. -on -one that it's convenient for the veteran to make that happen. Now, we had said that Bedford is a large campus. Now, there, there's a brand new building that, that was just yes. opened up a little bit. Can you tell me about that building? The Bedford Green? Yeah. Which is not open yet. It's not open No, yet. it's not oh. open yet. <laughs> All right, so no. what is this Bedford Green you speak of? So, yes, of? the Bedford Green. 
<laughs> oh, no, let me see. You can have that. Um, wow. This is... Um, and there's some pictures, yep. This is gorgeous. It's, it is gorgeous. I was just down there the other day. Um, wow. The Bedford Green, I mentioned before, there's two kinds of VASH vouchers. So there's tenant-based vouchers and there's project-based vouchers. Um, and we have a building in Beverly that has project-based vouchers attached to it. Um, and the Bedford Green is our new building that we're, we're constructing on the campus of the Bedford VA. Um, and it's very specifically for veterans who are 55 and over. So they have to meet the same eligibility criteria for VASH, um, the income, the um, need for case management, the homeless piece, um, and you know all of those things. But they also have to be 55 and over. And it's really, really an effort to kind of acknowledge our Vietnam era veterans and other folks um, there's been a lot of you know, efforts over the years around returning soldiers and returning um, military personnel, um, and we really wanted to try to look at our aging veteran population and provide some permanent housing for them. It's really the first of its kind nationally. Um, it's just, the construction is just finishing now, so it's going through its inspections. We're hoping to have people move in at the end of this month. Um, we're almost full. We are still taking applications, so if folks are interested in, interested in that, they can call the same numbers, um, and we'll take applications for that. It's very exciting to provide that kind of housing for that population of veterans. Now, I was at the groundbreaking for this yes. as well, um, and I, I'm hoping to get an invitation to the uh, to the grand opening. Yes. Um, thank you so much for staying with us, mm -hmm. listening to us, and uh, please don't be afraid to call Cheryl. Our number again is 781-687-3521, or you can call my office, 978-688-9525. This is Jerry McGuire, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. All right, what do you say we go to lunch? <laughs> nice. Thank you.